Hey, Charles. Hey there. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Thank you. Good, good. How are you? Good, good. Yeah. He's working on the drawing sounds piece for tomorrow. Submitting? Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow. How was your trip? Good, good. Huh? Where were you? Never tell Havana. anyone. Havana. Havana. Yeah. Tokyo. <laughs> London. Oslo. So, how many weeks did you do all this? <laughs> Two weeks? Oh, well. Two and a half. So what's your secret for no jet lag, seriously? Yeah, lots of jet lag. <laughs> I can never see you with jet lag though. I'm impressed. I do that twice a month and I die. Oh, so, so yeah. what's left to do? How they would sort of do the same task? Mm -hmm. Not really sure. Mm -hmm. Just, Just fine. add it to the Just add a paper and let somebody else do it. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. They could go out of the way, they can do the same, I guess, or they could do something different from then. See what happens. <laughs> so where are we? So we're in the lab. Uh, this is where all the uh, students work. Um, normally about ten, five or ten people in different parts of the world. We've got some psychologists, some marketeers, mm -hmm. some uh, fashion designer, oh, yeah. and uh, some psychologists and uh, occasional chefs. Um, and people work out here and then we've got the testing room just next door with all the labs for uh, running experiments. Can you show us a little bit? Sure. Uh, you can take your backpack off if you want. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, what have we got here? This is one of the uh, testing rooms, which we've got uh, geared up to um, deliver smell. So we've got an eight-channel smell machine. You can put your fragrance in here, your perfume, your... <coughs> and then uh, it'll come out people's by people's nose while they're looking at different things. So if I want to know, does this perfume make you look younger, more attractive, more like Brad Pitt? This is kind of the apparatus to do it. And this okay. allows us under computer control then to deliver lots of different smells and figure out which smell works best. And you call it an olfactometer? Olfactometer, yeah. Uh, sometimes we deliver smell by the machine because then we can give maybe a thousand different pulses of smell over an hour. Um, and other times we'll do it by hand, just depending on the on the protocol. And sometimes people are looking at the screen while they're smelling, sometimes they're feeling a bit of fabric. We found that certain smells will make clothes feel softer, for example. We're just trying to build the, the test, kind of the psychological test to prove that one sense affects another. And this is smell and something. Okay. You see all the black paint to avoid any reflections. This, in fact, used to be a, um, this used to be a, the observation room. So in, that, in the 1960s, the experimenters would be here, looking out in the in the lab there, where people interacted. But it's a one-way okay. glass, so no yeah. one knew you were being watched. You don't use it anymore. No. Not that I tell anyone. <laughs> okay. And this is the main lab. Uh, so we've got lots of soundproof booths so we can stick subjects in there and um, they can't hear anything going on outside make it dark quiet and then beep them flash them present different stimuli and, so, you, uh, so you have a room for every sense um, for different combinations so that one was smell in here we tend to do audio visual mostly a bit of touch sometimes uh, in that corner we're doing uh, warning signals for car drivers so we've got um, Trying to see how you, where do you put a warning signal so it makes a car driver realise there's something behind them in their blind spot. Um, and I've got another smell machine around here. And then sometimes it just gets changed depending if we're doing food experiments, then maybe you, um, this becomes the kitchen. And we set up a little table for one around the corner there. And as you can sort of see, nothing ever gets thrown away. <laughs> we be collecting stuff for 20 years now. Never know when you might need it. So lots of cables and wires and things to uh, stimulate one of your senses or measure your response. Machines to, to change the colour of the lighting. Uh, how, does, uh, how does disorder inf uh, affect your uh, senses? I think it's creative. I don't like any of those, those nicely uh, all clean kind of, you know, labs for, um, for magazines and TV shows where nothing ever gets done. And, so this is much more sort of hands-on, and I think the, the sort of simpler uh, sort of fosters creativity. 
and then probably so there's whatever you want to do, there's something in here that'll allow you to do it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a matter of kind of you know, bringing things together and almost making sometimes uh, kind of uh, yeah. It's like a big tool, toolbox. Yeah. And now we used to have a workshop that's kind of gone, but we've got most of the bits left. And um, in the old days, when people started their PhD, they'd have to kind of build a box to control almost engineering some equipment. And now, um, yeah. It's all been used, or is being used, or will be again. Some of the old technology, the video um, decks there, probably past it now. But we did lots of experiments on uh, sort of you know playing videos and moving faces and voices around. So okay, lots of the old technology. And um, around here we've got what have we got? What is the most important uh, experiment going on right now? Important? You tell me. Oh. <laughs> um, so. Doing some fun stuff here on um, taste. So these pumps, where I have a subject in the box, and you can squirt a different taste in their mouth. So they've got sweet, sour, and bitter. Uh, and now we're looking to see if uh, what's the. We know that people will say sweet tastes are around, sour and bitter tastes are angular, uh, and we're trying to see is there something better than a star? Is there a perfect sour shape? How many points should it have? Is it like a star that's asymmetrical with six points? For example, so we're trying to sort of uh, figure out the perfect shapes, colours, textures, sounds that correspond to each and every taste and then flavour. That's one of the students working there. Uh, and then up here we've got some cans, so we're doing lots of stuff on, on the sound of opening a can. Um, and the sounds of pouring, and what sort of information those sounds might convey to a consumer. Is it a more expensive product or a fresher? Is it cooler? Is it more energetic? Uh, so at the moment we're kind of recording uh, from real uh, cans, uh, and then and then we're going to see if we can find that certain sounds sound better to people. Oh, there we go. Experimental materials. Um, so we've got some different sort of cans, different bottles. We're opening all sorts of stuff up, recording the sound of it, uh, and then putting it into one of these boxes for people to listen to and say, if you heard that sound, how much would you pay for a, a bottle or a can that sounded like that? And do you think that that is um, brand X or brand Y? Is it, uh, is it beer or soft drink? Things like that. Okay. And then try and if we get the, if we can find the perfect sound for a particular brand or to convey a certain attribute, then we'll pass that back to the people who are making the cans and the bottles and they'll try and engineer, change the design of the cap or the closure to, to, to reproduce the sound that we know people really like to hear. Or maybe next time you see an advert on TV and somebody opens a can or pours a bottle into a glass, maybe the sound you hear isn't the actual sound of the thing. It's been modified in order to convey a certain uh, sensation or expectation. Hey Charles, you busy? I don't, no, no, I'm okay. Thank you. So, about uh, the last uh, experiment we did on faces and tastes. Mm -hmm. So I've run a few analyses, just preliminary, to see if we have something interesting. Um, and so what is cool is, so we had three faces, right? One which is neutral, mm -hmm. so it was very flat. The smiling face mm -hmm. and the sort of sc scorn face mm -hmm. we've got. So what we got, what we expected for smiling and frowning face, so we get enhanced effect for bitterness with this one and enhanced sweet taste for the smiling mm -hmm. one. And what I did not expect, well, it makes sense, but we just didn't expect it as a like main effect was uh, that neutral also had uh, suppressing influence. Mm -hmm. So I guess the explanation would be that we, have, we get that effect because um, suppressing your muscles is already an emotional mechanism to reduce the intensity of an emotion, right? So if we like do... Like with a... Um the smiling packaging works well, as a neutral there was the flat one right also worked and uh, so yeah it, it makes sense so mm -hmm. it, it does kind of tie up and what is more interesting I think is and that it's, and it's as, as big an effect as the scowling one no the, 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 the scorn one is mm -hmm. I mean it's like the difference is is, is quite interesting it's quite it's quite significant I think I haven't checked the, the, the how big the difference mm -hmm. is between them but uh, at least in the uh, partial letter square you can see the effect size for scorn 
stronger, smile, and last neutral. Yeah. So interesting. But I guess so. What would seem to be the case is that the, the scorn phase has a major, like a greater effect for, in general, just taste in bitterness than what s smiling has for sweetness. Mm -hmm. So I guess aversive uh, facial expressions have a uh, powerful effect on. Right. You don't know whether the scorn face is stronger. In people than than the smiling one, uh, maybe. But we will. That is, so we have a uh, sort of a ver approach avoidance research showing sweetness, bitterness, and this whole continuum. Even mm -hmm. in the Cell Press paper by Yarmolinsky, mm -hmm. showing how we're uh, sweetness, umami, appetitive, and. Yeah, you see lots of others who um, if you've got a big plan and um, uh, I'm predicting uh, I'm planning for years ahead, then that kind of takes. It takes the spontaneity out and it takes yeah. the joy out and um, that's why I kind of refuse to do any of these grants that say Okay, so that's number 113, which is right here. I'll help you with the ones in the beginning. So you drink it, and then after that you make the face. I drink it or I taste it? Well, it's the, it's the same. It's the same? Yeah. And then now you make the face. Do you make the face? Neutral. No, number two is smile. One oh. is neutral, two smile, three frown. Oh, this is the test. I now this is just water. Yeah. And then I. Uh, I and now I, you need to <laughs> smile. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> then oh, you okay. then yeah. you rinse your mouth. You can leave them there or yeah. on oh, next. This was water, so I don't need to do that. You press enter to continue. And then you an you answer the question. So oh, how? Angle. Angular, angular, round. angular or round was your facial expression. What is angular? Um, whatever you you think it is, I we can tell because if not, that will affect the uh, the study. So whatever, you, however you felt it was. Oh, oh, oh! Sorry, that was a different uh, question. No worries. <coughs> How pleasant was uh, was very pleasant. Okay, so now we are into 353, which is this one. And now you make the face, which is frown. Yes, enter to continue. <coughs> enter, yes. <coughs> 